Hey everybody, it's Michael P. White. I'm back again, back again to do some more summer reading drawing. I figured I'd do some other cool stuff. I, I got a good game plan for this next portion I'm gonna do. Oh look, behind me, I got dragons up again. There's that dragon flying in like that. I love drawing dragons. There's so many different kind of dragons you can pick. Emerald dragons and um, dragons that live in Scotland. They're all mythology, of course, and mythological. But uh, I told you about that last time about you. Oh, look, here's a dragon right here. This lot of scales is back again. You know, I wish I had like, well, I got that right here. This dragon is an amazing book, The Library Dragon by Carmen Didi and Peachtree Publishers. Now I thought, what can I do for a second thing to really make this work? And one of the things I really love to do is to draw wildlife. I started doing owls and wildlife when I was a kid. It was really cool when I was a kid. Mark Trail lived down the street from me over in Sandy Springs and he would put some animal, a deer or a bear or something in the paper every weekend. Every weekend he was there and I would grab the comic parts to see what Mark Trail had done. And to me it was like magical that he lived like five miles from my house. I thought it was kind of cool. So let's, let's draw something else. Let's, you know what I'm gonna do? I think I'm gonna go for a humpback whale, which will be very different. Everybody get that pen ready. Get it ready, here we go. Remember all you need is pencil and paper. Sit in front of me and uh, summer reads. Imagine your story, yay. Let's go here. I'm gonna go right here. Oh, look, there's a start to travel on that one. Let's go here and do this. So take your pen, get ready. Remember, don't need an eraser. And what I want you to do is take one line. Here's your paper like this. We're gonna draw this whale like this. I'm gonna go right here and put in a squiggly line like that. One squiggly line coming in, just like that. And you know, I take everything and break it down into line and circle. So people ask me, they go, how can you draw a whale right out of your head? It's practice. I would go to my library and take out books on humpbacks and blue whales and manatees and just draw them. So look what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go over here and put in the hump, the back of that humpback's head like this, just a little bit off my paper. Take it right off your paper like that. Remember, it's okay to make your drawings go off the page. It says your idea is gigantic, so that's cool. Take them off your paper. Um, to do, I want you to put a fin in here like this. We're gonna make a fin come out. So over here, I'm gonna take one line and go just like that. Put a line like that and bring that back just like this. You're putting in a humpback's fin. The fin's poking out like that. I like to put a little bit of wrinkle in here. That's where it kind of connects to the body like that. Um, remember, texture and shadow, huge part of art. So put in, just take your pen and da-da-da, put them all around like this, or your pencil, and just put in dots all around. Take your time. You're an illustrator. You know, Summer reads, imagine your story. Maybe a whale becomes like a captain of a ship. That would make a great story right there. That'd make an awesome story. I'm gonna take my whale, and to do a whale's eyeball, I'm gonna go like this. I'm gonna put a C in here like that. Put a C in, a sideways C, and then a line right through the middle of it like so, and just scribble, scrabble. This works for a dolphin too. Whales, all kinds of stuff like that. Put in a humpback's eyeball. It looks kind of cool. And on top of that humpback, look what they got. They got bumps all over the top of the back, just like this. Just throw in some scribble, scrabble, little bumps, a little bit more texture. Remember, we talked about less is more. So just put in a few. You don't have to cover the whole thing. Don't cover the whole thing in hump little bumps like that. And here comes the part. See, a lot of people, when they draw this, they go, I don't see it. Where is it? Well, here it comes. Watch this. I'm going to take a curve, and I'm going to bring it down just like this. Look at this. Look at this humpback come to life right there. Go like, oh, I see the humpback. There he is right there. There's another fin over on this side right here. So just throw a little fin in there like that. Just put a little fin like that. Now, since he's a baleen whale and they eat krill, they open up their mouths and whoa, all these krill just fall right into it. Put in some lines for texture underneath like this. Just do that like this. We're putting in making it look like a real life humpback. People are gonna go, man, where'd you learn how to draw humpbacks like that? Show your friends and neighbors. 
If you really want to do something cool, here's where that shadow comes into play. Watch this. Put a little bit of shadow underneath here like this. When you put that shadow in and move it away from it, it makes that fin look like it can go like this. So, I just study where shadows and texture go. That's because I'm a student of art just like you. Oh, I know what's missing. Bubbles. Let's throw in some bubbles here at Moggy Regional Library System. Here we go. Let's go here. I'm going to put in, and here's the cool part too. Put them in different shapes and sizes. Small, small, large, giant monster bubble off my page. And I really don't have a title for this. Some people like to call it current events. I'm going to sign my name now. Somebody sign your name. Biggest thing you'll do as an illustrator or author, write that name. Everybody, take your pen. Hold on for a minute. Hold up your humpbacks. Show them off for all to see in your family. Everybody around, show off your humpbacks. Yeah, it's kind of cool. That's really neat. Yay! Imagine your story of a humpback. So what I'm going to do next is move this off the side. Move this over here. We talked about some things last time. I did ships and bottles for old Zeb. Here I had to study hair for Harriet's horrible hair day. I wanted to show you a little bit more about bows. About Bo's Bayou Treasure. Look at this right here. Here's Bo right here. And uh, he's sitting on his treasure chest. The last thing I ever do for a book, people go, okay, what's the last thing? It's the cover. It's the jacket. So I go and I sit down and think, what does this book mean to me? Because the cover is going to make somebody walk over and pick it up. And I know that's tough, but it's true. So I did like 20 different ideas for this cover. And finally, they decided on frogs all over all over frogs like that on a treasure chest. I mean, I had so many ideas. It's not that I like one more than the other. I let the publisher decide and they go, we like this. The toughest part was the back cover too. Oh, look. During when I was doing this book, when I was sketching, I did fishing this way. I did a little sign that said fishing that way because yeah, the can of worms over here on, on this, where is it right there? A little can of worms right there. And with that would be so cool to put that in there. And then I got, oh no, what if I put in the back is it's treasures that way, which is like, he's like, that's it. That's the back cover right there. I did not know that they would use a map, like a treasure map for the inside like this. And those are called end papers. When you're, when you're an illustrator and you're doing a book, the, when you first open up a book, you'll see that they're called end papers. Now, if you look up duck on a bike, you'll see that they're Tassels by David Shannon. Um, in, in Where the Wild Things Are by Maury Sendak, they're like palm trees that are done with like little, little um, cross hatching, like pen and ink like that. So every time, we, in Library Dragon, they're actually scales for that book. I can show you later. So open up the book. I had to live in the bayou. I, my brain lived in the bayou, but I love the animals that were in here. Look, that's the bayou. I had to make it look, here he is right here, here's Bo. I showed you some of these animals, look at this. This is one of my favorite pages in this book, it's here. And this is the page that I did to prove to the publisher that I was the right one for this book. This Bo, he can't sleep. He can't go to bed, he can't, it's like I can't fall asleep. I'm so excited about tomorrow morning. I'm gonna wake up and there's gonna be a treasure, I'm gonna go on an adventure and find a treasure chest, that's what I'm gonna do. So here he is over here. He's like, wakes up and the sun's just starting to come up in the morning. The sun's coming up over the bayou with all the fireflies dancing around. Here's Rosalind and Maggie Bunn right here. They did this book, they wrote it, mother and daughter. And then I illustrated this book. I'll show you, I showed, I don't wanna give away the end. I don't like to tell stories like that. I am proud of this old, um, Snapping turtle over here, though. He's like, hey, is there treasure here to be found? He's like, snap, snap, young man. It's all around. Just keep open up your eyes and look around. You'll find treasure. So I talked to you about double pages. I talked about picture books. Another favorite page in here is when he's reflecting on what his journey's like for the day. Sometimes we got to stop and take a deep breath and go, why is he really out here? He's looking for treasure. But the treasure might not be what he thinks it is, which is really cool. So that's Bo's Bayou Treasure. And I did this. You know what? 
Let's draw another one. I got something so cool. Since we're kind of going sea life like that, and it's summertime, and everybody thinks of the beach, let's go in for a shark. Let's do a shark. How about that? Watch this. Dun, 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 dun. I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna take my paper back up here like this. Let me get that ready right here to get the right position there like that. And then let's go in like this. Here's that plain piece of paper. You know, it doesn't really matter where you start, but I do like to start with those eyeballs. It makes it so much easier. Here goes, here's the middle. Just come up a little bit. Put in some eyeballs just like that. Right there, put in some eyeballs. It's gonna be a shark. <laughs> what kind of shark though? Oh no, wait a minute. Imagine your story. What if a shark was a chef? And all this shark made food that had extra bite. That'd be kind of cool, I like that. <laughs> what if the shark, oh, wait a minute. What if a shark had a hammer on his head? He'd be a, <laughs> uh, you know, a hammer head. What if she had a lemon on her head? She'd be a lemon shark. Watch how you do a shark's nose. Just bring this out like this and then bring it all the way back up in like that. Dun, 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 dun. Like a sharky, just like that. If you notice, my stuff's kind of comical and silly. It's kind of what children's books are. I mean, there's so many great books out there. I told you I love the Stinky Cheese Man. That's one of my favorite ones. Um, there's classics, too. There's so many great classics. But a Blustery Day, Winnie the Pooh. Wow, that's, that's one of my favorite things on planet Earth. I actually drew Winnie the Pooh, but I put him in a bubble bath and changed his name to Shampoo. Watch this. I'm going to put in these chompers. Here come some chompers over here like this. Dun, dun. Oh, look at those teeth. You're the artist. Put in as many teeth as you would like. Just put in a row of chompers like that. Put in those chompers. Let's go like this. A little bit more centered. And then come back like this. Take your time. Put in that back fin just like this. Of course, the shark's bigger than the paper, which is kind of cool. I got this right here. I got some gills. Put in some gills like that today. Hello, gills. Just like this. Just like that, and then watch this. Make your shark go off the paper. It's half a shark. Here goes the shark's nose, like this. Put in that nose. It's all ideas. And then watch these bubbles. Once again, the minute you put bubbles in something, you instantly say, as an illustrator, it's underwater. That's, that's one of the things they teach us. Like, you want to make something like it's underwater? Just throw in some bubbles. Everybody goes, it's underwater. Um, I'm going to put one fin poking out like this, like it's poking out. So watch this. I'm going to go like this. Put a fin coming out just like that. So we got a shark. He's like, hey, how you doing, everybody? It's me. I'm Sharky. But well, here we go. We can make 50,000 different sharks. What if we did a shark... Ooh. What if a shark had a taco? What if he was fish tacos? I like that. That's kind of cool. What if we did a shark sandwich? He'd be a fish sandwich. Um, what if a shark was fishing? He'd be shark fishing. I don't know. Sit back for a few minutes and think of, I mean, we could come up with 600 different sharks. That'd be kind of cool like that. Put in bubbles. If you want to, let's do this. Let's put in, oh, I know we can do. Let's put in, since it's summertime and everybody loves it, Let's put in a frozen treat. Watch this. Go in here and put in a popsicle stick like that. Put in a popsicle stick and then throw in a big old popsicle just like this. Ogmoggy artist, unbelievable. Summertime, look at that right there. So, so you know I've got a crazy title for it. If you know my stuff, you know, I've always got a title for it. How about this? How about we do Frostbite. <laughs> Look at this. It's frostbite, just like this. F R O S T B I T E. One frostbite coming up, just like that. Um, oh, almost forgot. Don't forget to sign that name. Everybody, take a deep breath. Take a break. Hold up your incredible sharkies. Show these off to friends and family. Now you can, all summer long, you can actually come up with sharks. Oh no, what if the shark was reading? What if he was a reading shark in a school of fish? 
There's an award-winning story right there. I love it. Yay! Summer readers, hold up your sharks. Woo-hoo-hoo! Yay, like that. When you hold up your shark, it's called seafood. That's awesome. So, you know what I'll do? I'll show you another one here. I got this. So, I told you about the end papers for Library Dragon. Here we go. They're scales, just like this. In this book, Library Dragon. This is actually kind of my claim to fame, but I didn't make this book famous. Librarians did. They're the ones that read this book to everybody. So that's Library Dragon right there. Carmen Agraditi, Michael P. White, and Peachtree Publishers, ladies and gentlemen. Peachtree Publishers, sorry. Um, let's do this. So many things in this book <clears throat> that I love. Here's, here's my one of my favorite ones. I had to go and think, is a dragon hot or cold? Well, a dragon's hot, so what would a dragon eat for lunch? A dragon would see, eat something so hot, it's incredibly hot. How about... Jalapeno kebabs with Pompeian hot sauce. They're so hot, she has to wear a welder's mask to eat her lunch. And I love how they let me put that little glow in there. You don't even see the glow in the peppers, but you see it here. It's like whew, somebody's gonna need some some a big tall glass of water because that's gonna be hot and spicy once they have it. And there's the teachers coming in to try and get her. Hey, Miss Lotta Scales, you should let the kids read the books. She chases them out. She chases them out right there. They can read you this in your library. But all of this is done with airbrush. I sketch and sketch and sketch, and they pick the ones they wanted, and I cut out and spray painted every piece in this book. Even this, everything. There's dragons hitting all over the place. Look at that. There's a dragon fire extinguisher right there. They're everywhere. All kinds of dragons. The only thing that never changed in this book is Molly Brickmeyer. She's the only thing that I drew the first time, and I went, I waited for them to go, uh, you know what, we need to do this and this and this to make it look like Molly, and they're like, no, you got her perfect the first time. She's lost her glasses, and here she goes right here. There goes Molly, she bumps into a book rack, and a copy of Snuff the Magic Dragon falls down. There's Snuff right there, and that dragon's like, I heard somebody's reading a book. Oh no, nobody's gonna read a book in my library. So she goes over, she stands up, and she grabs that book, and she goes over here. Look, she's got Mount Vesuvius antacid. Her lunch was so hot and spicy, she had to take some antacid. And there she is. She grabs that book, and she goes, hey, I'm looking at this book, and there's nothing wrong with it. And that's when Molly hops up in her lap and goes, oh, you know what? A dragon's warm. You're warm to the touch, Miss Lottie. Look at that. And that's when her scales fall off. I'm not going to tell you the surprise, but look at this right here. That's me. <laughs> so she's like, really? That's you? Many, many years ago, okay? And there's Carmen. She still looks the same. That's pretty cool. And let's draw one more. I think we should pull out another drawing out of our hat. So let's do this. Let's put this over here and then go here like this. Everybody watch me. We've done a dog. We've done a whale. We've done a really cool sharky. I like that. And you can take all these ideas and run with them too. Write your own story from them. So let's go here. I draw bears, cows, frogs, dogs, armadillos, dinosaurs, dragons, moose, deer. Oh, I know. Let's do this. I don't think we might have drawn a pig already, so I don't want to just do a pig. We've, I know we did a chicken before. That was kind of cool. We did that. When chicken went to the beach, he'd be chicken of the sea. That's kind of neat. Let's go over here and try this one. How about we do, we did a fish. I know we did a catfish, too. So, I'm gonna make this one a surprise. I know, let's do this. Let's do a bug. I haven't drawn any bugs, watch. Here I go. I'm going in for a bug. Let me get my right pen here. Just like this, here I go. I'm going in for some bug eyeballs, just like this, put in some eyeballs like that. Wow, how many bugs could we do from our imagination? Years ago, Every year they pick a theme for summer, and the summer theme was catch the reading bug. That was really cool, and I drew bugs all summer. That was neat. So we got antenna right there. Instantly, just like the bubbles with the shark, somebody's going to go, that's a bug. I know that bug. I'm going to go in here like this and go, woo, just like that. Put in that face like that. Put a little shadow underneath. You're the artist. Look what that shadow does. 
it pushes those forward. Shadows can pull things back and push them forward in your art. I'm known for making my characters kind of smile and grin. So let's make this bug grin like this. Let's just make that bug kind of give a smile and then take a deep breath. I get going too quick sometimes, sorry. Take a deep breath and then go like this. Go one, two, take your bug off the paper. We're doing half a bug. Oh, drop my pen, sorry, that happens occasionally. Go here like this, put in some wings. I'm from Atlanta, we call them wangs, just like that, put in some wings. And you can put in some spots all around like this. Just throw in some spots. You're the artist, put as many as you like. There's no count, just as many as you like, like that. Oh no, what if we had done a B? We could have done a spelling B, that'd be okay. Or how about this? A B with sushi would be wasabi. I love some sushi, I love it. Um, today I'm gonna make this bug. I'll put a little bit of texture here in the wings too, just like this. Throw a little bit of texture in there like that. Make your bug's arm kind of poking up like this. This bug's arm's poking up. One, two, three, four, like that. This bug's like, oh, 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 I think I know the answer to the question, teacher. I think I know the answer, which is cool. Let's go in here. What kind of bug? How about bug tacos? Ooh, that's kind of, that's kind of gross. How about that? How about bug casserole? Or even better, you know what I'm gonna do today? I'm gonna take my bug, and I'm gonna put in some hot sauce. Mmm, it's like some pea, Texas pea. Watch this hot sauce right here. Just like this. Throw in some hot sauce. H-O-T, and they're like, well, why hot sauce? Because, look what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna throw in some hot wings like this. Look at that, it makes them look like real live hot wings. Ooh, maybe he's got a little brother named Lemon Pepper. That'd be kind of cool. So go over here, sign your name like this. Tell all your friends to sign their name. You, you know, you get, you get to work on your signature when you do this. Just figure out what signature works for you. There's no perfect one. It's like, it took me a while to realize I was like scribble scrabble. So just sign your name like that. Then hold up your hot wings. Woo -hoo -hoo! Lemon pepper, barbecue, teriyaki hot wings. We can make a whole book out of wings. Oh, by the way, he was winging it the whole time. <laughs> Everybody, if you would, hold up your hot wings. Show them off. Really is cool to be a part of Summer Reads here. Let me show you what I got for you. I got this guy right here, lots of bears and stuff like that. And you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go here. Hey, this summer, imagine your story. Read lots of books. I told you that like 10 times. Um, here in Okmoggy, read lots of books and you know, whatever you like to do for summer, you know. Um, take an idea, make a story out of it. I wanna thank Mr. Josh, Miss Debbie Kathy for letting me draw again. You know what I decided to? I'm gonna come back and do another drawing for you before it's all <laughs> said and done with, because this is really fun for me too. So I wanna thank everybody for letting me be a part of this and uh, be a part of Summer Reads and yay! Imagine your story. Everybody have a great time, bye.